Well, this is going to be a test of sorts to see if I can do video tutorials or not, like like real ones. People have been asking me to do this for quite a while, and I don't want to say I brushed them off, but I don't know a whole lot about video editing, and, and I didn't have a microphone, so it was kind of like a... Yeah, I, I dragged my feet getting getting to this point, I'll admit. But, you know, this channel has over a thousand subscribers, which is <laughs> totally crazy to me. But it, it indicates that, you know, there's some interest in this hand-painted stuff, and perhaps there's not enough other people out there explaining how to go about doing it. I don't know. But yeah, I'm going to, you know, paint this and uh, talk a bit about it. If that sounds like it's of interest to you, maybe this video will help you, maybe it won't, I don't know. But um, either way, I think I'm going to get started. Okay, to save some time, I just went ahead and modeled this in advance. It's so simple, I didn't really figure it was worth showing. Uh, the way I did the UVs is not how I normally would do it, but what it'll do is make me only, or allow me to only have to paint one side, and it'll just kind of repeat it around, rather than... I didn't see any reason to, you know, paint multiple sides of this thing, since they're going to be so similar anyway. Um, I'm using the Google Summer of Code Paint branch, which you can find builds on graphicall.org. Um, most of the features are planning to be merged around 2.72. So if you're watching a video, you know, in the future, watching this video in the future, and you have a build after that, you should have these features. One of them that it has is if you don't have a texture on your model and you go into texture paint mode, it'll automatically set one up for you. So even if this is like the default cube without UVs, I could just go into texture paint mode and start painting on it and it'll work, which is really nice. And that's managed over here in this layers tab. Like if, if I had multiple materials and textures or stuff, all that stuff would be listed in here. And then you can select between them so you know which one you're painting on rather than, you know, the old way where you have to tab in and out of edit mode. And as you can see, you can add more textures through here too, which will automate, rather than, you know, manually doing it with all these settings. So uh, that saves a lot of time. Um, it's not perfect. I noticed that, like, this did not update. Um, if I select this, it will. But even then, I don't, I can't see the UVs, so I still have to, you know, do the old-fashioned way where I tab into edit mode and pick a texture and come back out. You can see the, um, now I have the UVs over here. So maybe maybe some of that stuff would be fixed. I don't know. I don't know how complicated that is. Another thing you might have noticed is these new brush icons up here. The presets are actually exactly the same, at least in this build. I'm not sure if there's any plans to change these or not. I don't find these very good for painting. If I just do a stroke, you can see that this edge is pretty blurry which is not very ideal if you're wanting to do sharp detail. But on the other hand, you know, it, it's really prone to uh, to stepping. You can blend with it, but just not very easily. It's just somewhere in between not being very useful either way. So I find that when I'm using these default presets that I have to fiddle with this curve a lot, which I don't like to do when I'm painting. When I'm actually painting, I just like to think about painting, you know, light, shadow, color. I don't like to think about brush settings. There are these presets down here which are okay, but I think they are they seem to be more calibrated for sculpting maybe. Like if I do this max, has no fall off at all, it should give me a very crisp edge, which it does, but it's pixelated. And to be fair, this is because it doesn't have anti-aliasing, it's not really the curve's fault. Either way, not very good for painting. So, what I usually do is I just make a couple of my own beforehand. I have an entire set, but Blender has this fake user data block system that makes it really complicated to to get brushes in and out of Blender, and, and it saves with the file. Uh, then you have to go and delete the, the other ones that aren't very useful, which means you have to unflag it, delete, restart Blender. It's, it's a really big mess. I can make an entire tutorial just on this data block system it's so confusing so instead what I usually do is I just you know take these presets and then just overwrite them with settings that I do like it only takes a few seconds once you're used to it anyway 
Um, the way the curve works is the left side is the center of the brush and the right side is the outer edge. So you're just dealing with the radius. The up and down is is how transparent the pixels are in that area. So right now I have like a max brush setting. These are it's completely opaque pixels all the way across. Which gives me this stroke that I just talked about that has the pixelated edges that I don't like. To fix those, all you have to do is just add a fall off. So something like that. And again, this is center, totally opaque pixels, just right at the end, we're just kind of blurring it out. And that'll give a stroke that is like that, where it's it's still a hard edge, but it's a lot cleaner. And the other brush that I want is totally the opposite, where it's completely soft. And to get that, I just start with this diagonal and go all the way down where it's almost transparent and just has a fall off, and it'll give a brush that's you know you can just build up and get nice smooth transitions I'm actually using a mouse right now when I switch to a tablet this is even easier to do another thing to be aware of with the presets is that the color picker is actually not a global setting it's per preset each preset will have its own color so if I select red on the soft brush and then switch to hard you can see that it's not red anymore, it's white. That's what I had last selected. Uh, this can be tedious sometimes, I find, when painting, because I will be um, be painting something. And then I will want, you know, a, a darker value, maybe. So I select it on the color picker, but then I, you know, I want a smoother transition, and I so I switch brushes, and I don't have, I mean, it's still there, but it's on the other brush. I have to re configure this brush to have that same color which can be annoying sometimes you can color pick your way out of it just color pick a thing and then reselect it but other times it's just you know you just kind of got to deal with it I don't know if there's any plans to change that or not just something to be aware of um, the last preset that I'm going to set up is just a fill which is actually a new tool for this branch there's also masking which works like sculpt mode I'm not going to demo that in this video maybe you know future if maybe I'll make a tutorial on it in the future I am gonna use fill it's pretty simple it's just a flood fill and I'm gonna just use it to set up kind of a base color kinda of from a blue down to like like a purple I, just, I want like a cool brick look for most of this so something around there and just to make sure that the whole thing gets filled I turn off the clued colon normal and to use gradient is easy enough you just click and drag and it it is based on your it's a projection Notice that it's not getting this top piece. I don't know. I don't know why it gets these, but not that. Maybe the angles on these is a little off. Another feature of fill is if you go into paint mode in the UV image editor, there is an additional option for fill threshold. By default, it's zero, and it's only going to fill one little pixel. The higher up this goes, the more colors it'll bleed into. So if I just do like a 0 .010, it's going to fill in all this black. So like that, you know, it's a fill tool. About every image editor has something like that. Let's see. Before I forget, I want to turn these back on. And the other thing I wanted to do is change the top piece and the bottom piece more to a warmer gray like a different material than what the middle middle part bricks are going to be. So to do that, I'm just going to switch to a, a hard brush, change it to color blending mode and with a with the color I want, and then I'm just going to paint it over in here. And with the color blending mode, it's going to keep the values the same, but just adjust the hue on those pixels to get something like that. Since 
these are going to be the same material. I don't want this to get quite that dark. I want a little bit of a fall off, but that almost looks like it would be a, the material itself is interacting with light a bit different. So I want to brighten this up just a little bit, and I'm just going to use a mix with that. I still want it a little bit darker than the other one for the fall off, but you know I want them to look like they're it's the same kind of material, just under a bit different lighting conditions. So to kind of color more efficiently, what I try to do is work on the whole model at once. It's just an old painting rule. Um, you don't want to get caught in, caught up in detail too early on, or you're probably going to run into problems. I instead I just try to work the whole thing at once and just kind of refine the detail all at the same time. It's I just find it a little bit more efficient. It's a pretty common workflow. It's not always easy to do in Blender. Like if you have a complicated model, you have to switch between things because you can't paint on more than one object at a time. But it's usually the best to try to do it that way. That looks like it should be a bit brighter than that. Let's see. You can see that there's a face pointing almost straight up. If light was coming down, quite it would catch quite a bit of light. And on the other hand, underneath these, there should be more shadow. So I find it better just to block in big stuff like that first, which is what I'm going to do here. I think that's a bit too bright. Let's tone that back a bit. And I'm not going to be perfect. This is going to be a really beat up thing by the time I'm done detailing it anyway, so... No reason to try to get perfectly straight lines. I think I'm going to make this uh, a little bit cooler underneath. That looks a little better. I think that needs to be a bit darker. And then the corners of things, actually let me get this, these angles up here on the top part. Or I guess they're this piece. you know this thing if this thing was outdoors you know there'd be dirt flying everywhere and this thing would get pretty dirty but it also erodes from you know the wind blowing the dirt and the weakest points on things is usually the edges and so it chips away pieces and then exposes new material if that makes any sense so I usually use that you know to pull you know, I'll make these corners lighter and stuff. You'll you'll see what I mean. Actually, I'm going to use a soft brush for this. So it'll be the edges of that. I think I'm going to do the same thing with the So something like that, and I, I'll probably, yeah, I'll do these two. You know, I just want to pull out them edges a bit. And then uh, I'm going to use the actual, a new tool, which is the line. Oh, well, if it'll let me. The hotkey didn't seem to be working.
I'm going to do this in the UV image editor, I think. And I'm just going to kind of sketch in the bricks. I don't know if there's a way to constrain this or not. Was not anything I tried, but Blender hotkeys tend to not be anything that I try. They're kind of, it kind of just does its own thing. I don't want these to be perfectly even or anything. We'll do a bigger brick right here. Just to break the pattern a little bit. That's going to be a problem, isn't it? Hmm. The way I unwrap this is working against me. I'll just... I'll just do that. Uh, let's see. Should I go straight down? No, I don't like that. Again, I'm not even trying to be perfect here. I think it's okay. And I think I'll split this concrete slab, at least the bottom one, I don't know. I think I'll leave the top one. So I think it'll be too difficult with the way I unwrap this to do much with that anyway. Let's see, I want this to be in the center. I can use that 3D cursor probably as a makeshift guide. So yeah, something like that. That way it looks like four, four stones for the base. So... Um, let's, let's just do some color variation stuff. A lot of people, it's a style choice. A lot of people will do, you know, their habits is, I'll do a blue and then down in the shadows it'll be a dark blue and then in the highlights it'll be a light blue. I use a, I tend to go for more analogous color schemes, I guess. And analogous means on a color wheel, the colors are close to each other. It happens in nature a lot. If you see, like, grass... The grass will be green, but the highlights on the grass will be like a yellow, more yellow green, and then the shadows will be more of a blue green. It's because the direct light is getting hit by the sun, so it's a warmer color. The shadows is from the reflection of the blue sky, and I usually try to do that. I vary it even more sometimes. Just you know, experimentally, I'll just start throwing reds and stuff in there. I don't know if I'm going to do that in this demo or not. Maybe. Um, so to do that, you know, you just don't really be too careful, but I want to just, you know, start dabbing in some colors here. Oh, I'm on a line. No wonder it's so screwy. Let's try this again. Maybe get some more greenish blues in there. And there's a property of colors that is... It's all relative. If I do a gray, since I'm on a blue, if I just go straight gray, no color at all, and, and put it on this blue, it's going to look almost like it has warmth in it, almost like it's like this. It really does have some color into it, even though it doesn't. It's pure gray. On the other hand, if you put it on a, on a warm color, it almost looks like it has blue in it. And every color will do that, but it's easiest to see with gray. So sometimes I will just, you know, start dabbing little blotches of gray in there. It seems counterintuitive, but just adding gray can actually add color variation because you get warmth without actually adding the, the complementary color to whatever you're painting on. So I'm just dabbing around here. You'll this will make more sense later on why I'm doing this. I'm just trying to get color variation in there. I'm not really trying to 
paint the bricks. I'll come back and, and blend these, but, you know, for now I'm just kind of, I'm trying to generate happy accidents, basically. I think I will try to push this a bit and maybe um, throw some oranges or something in there. Some reds. Uh, let's do these two because I don't want to just work on one area like I said. I like to work the whole thing. Another thing you could do here is is actually use texture brushes. Um, I'm just you know keeping it simple and sticking to round. It's uh, there's there's a tendency for a lot of people they'll they focus more on the brushes than than the actual art aspect in digital at least. Back when I was on gouache, you know, was, nobody ever asked me what kind of brush I use, but in digital it's always oh if I just had his brush I could paint just like him, which you know it's not really how it works. But, having a texture on it, it can speed things up quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and start blending these in. I'm actually going to blend them mostly with this hard brush. And to do that, I just color pick what's there and then kind of smear it around a bit and try to make it work and I'm paying attention to the value color you can kinda of do whatever you want with but but value it'll it'll look really wrong if you if you don't do it correctly and value is just how dark or light a color is if you didn't know that color is almost like an illusion different animals see different amounts of color and even between humans some are colorblind and and I've read that some women in the population can actually see more colors than the average human can. Apologies for these gaps in uh, in the commentary. It's it's kind of hard to draw and talk at the same time. I'm not used to it. Normally, I just throw on a podcast or something and and just paint away, but. It's actually kind of interesting how difficult this is to do. I, I paint all the time, so most of the stuff going through my head as I'm doing this is, is really routine, but but needing to actually speak it out loud kind of makes me second-guess myself a bit. and I, it, It's it's difficult. You know, people who do this stuff, uh, props to you, because a lot of you guys make it look a lot easier than I think it really is. I'm probably going to lose a lot of that gradation that I had at the beginning and that's okay it, it, it was mainly there to give me a starting point I can always add it back at the end if I want it it's uh it's it's a thing in art the most daunting thing is is a blank sheet of paper right so the easiest thing I find is just to get rid of that as quick as you can it doesn't even really matter how I could have painted this any color I wanted at the beginning I'm not too concerned at this point if I lose the, the that initial sketch that I had. By the end of it, you know, the lines are too perfect, and I don't want to keep it that way. I don't want to say it's not realistic, but uh, I don't find it interesting, I guess. Oops. That's something you have to be careful of with projection paint. Sometimes I do that and I don't notice it until a lot later and get myself in a bit of trouble. Oh, and, and th this is the color palette. I didn't show that. I, I don't usually use that. What happens is if you hover and have the color picker selected, which is S, and then you and you click it'll add the colors to that in most image editors the way you color pick is you hold down a button is usually control or alt and then you click on something to pick the color in this case you just have to hover 
and I'm not used to that, so oftentimes I'll have like 20 colors by the end I'm painting in this color palette that I didn't even intend to do. It's just kind of a control thing that I'm not used to. But it's alright, it doesn't really hurt anything. And I do, I do sometimes use that color palette for things. So I'm kind of emphasizing these lines and things in here. I'm just putting some orange up there. It's going to, by the end of it, it's going to look, make that look like dirt, the way I'm going to blend it in. And you could use a soft brush if you wanted for stuff like this. Because this is all... It, when I get into the tighter detail, this will all come together and it'll look okay. Right now it just looks like crap, but it's just the way it starts. This is, so this is kind of like the reason I work on the whole thing at once. Is... Uh, it's like I could technically stop here. It doesn't look very good, but, you know, everything is technically done. But from here, I can just spend hours and hours just refining it until it looks really good. Whereas if I just had done this one brick and taken it all the way to full, then I'd have to do it again and again and again and again. It just seems more daunting. And then on top of that, like, this one will wind up being like by the time you get up to this brick you've got new techniques that you figured out you're all nice and warmed up and this one will start looking kind of crappy and then you'll want to go back and just redo that and it becomes kind of like an infinite loop whereas if you just do the whole thing at once everything's going to be a lot more even I think I'm going to warm up the the cracks just a bit. Uh, you know, just put a little bit of orange in there. The idea is kind of, you know, the dirt gets clung in here and water washes down. It doesn't quite get it out. And, you know, just things like that. Get a little more tone in this. Throw a little purple in there. A lot of this is there's going to be a little bit of a cast shadow. You can't do too dramatic of lighting on this stuff. But uh, you can do some. A lot of these little differences in color variation and, and slight value changes, in the end I'm going to, you know, pick and pull little highlights here and there and It'll be kind of like happy accidents that turn into extra surface detail. I think it's starting to come together. Looks less like uh, splotches of paint, more like solid objects at least.
I'm gonna add in some orange down here too for the same same reason. This is gonna it's gonna wind up looking like dirt by the end of it. I think I'm gonna pause here for just a second and see how I'm doing on time. Uh, so there might be an awkward cut in here. I don't know. So I think just to keep this from running on forever, I'm going to, you know, kind of show you how how the detail and stuff like that works, and then I'm probably gonna cut, and then kind of come back and show you at the end and maybe explain a few more things. Because so there's not really any reason. Like if I just do one of these. There's not really any reason to go, you know, and paint all of them because it's, it's the same principles over and over again. But the basically the tighter detail you do, I'm just making a little crack here. The tighter detail you do, the sharper your image becomes. So if I just do a crack here and I'm going to really pull in, make some... really detail this thing and you can just do easy it's easy enough you can even just do dots and things just knock little chunks out of the corners maybe we'll add a crack over here too maybe I'll chisel this whole corner down quite a bit but you basically you just chisel it off and then throw in some highlights to to pull that detail back out, I guess. And another thing you can do, I mean, some of this just gets into, you know, fundamentals of painting, which are a bit, you know, a little broad for just a little single painting demo, you know, maybe I'll continue doing these and fill in on some of that stuff, but so I want this edge, I really want to pull it out but it's not going to be, it's not a clean edge, it's been eroded so the the lighting on it isn't going to be perfect. Another thing I sometimes do is you can, if you put the dark if you put a fairly dark tone right next to these highlights, they'll really pop. It's, you know, contrast or whatever really pulls in the, uh, or pulls attention, I should say. I'm just going to do basic, I'll, I'll do both these bricks, I guess. And then I'm going to pause the video you know, paint, do all the detailing kind of off camera and then come back and maybe, you know, explain some things I did if necessary. I don't, but it's because this is basically the same thing over and over again, just for each brick. But you can see that just pulling in them highlights and putting in little cracks and things, um, really brings it all together where it doesn't look like random scribbles like this stuff does. It starts to look like a kind of a polished face but with a lot of color variation in it. So, something like that, it starts off really bold and looks awkward, but if you, if you zoom out and you take it into, you know, in the full context of things or whatever, it's, it'll fade, you know, and, and not be, not draw as much attention to itself. 
But I think, you know, stuff like that, it adds a lot of life to the thing, I think. I don't want to go too crazy with the cracks and, and make this thing look <laughs> shattered or something where, you know, that just wouldn't work. But, uh, at the same time, I do, I do find that kind of stuff really fun to paint. I just have to err on the being a bit conservative if I can. You can see it doesn't take much to really... pop out these shapes. I'm keeping it pretty simple in this uh, demo, but the cracks and things on this are, are an area you can, you can really play with stuff like that. Uh, do overgrowth or or just cake in some dirt in there and and things like that um just for time's sake or whatever i'm i'm just keeping this pretty minimal than how i would normally do it but you know i find i find stuff like that really really fun to paint and and it really uh it adds a lot of character i think to to stuff like this when you can put things like that in And then um, also with the brush strokes, uh, just a second here. When you when you get these, you know, you got all these varied brush strokes and stuff. Let me make a couple, just slightly darker. You get some, you get some little slightly darker things like that. If you take just a little bit lighter thing, a lighter uh, shade, and you just kind of really lightly do that it'll it'll look like even more detail on the on the stone kind of like a a chunk flaked off a bit let me do some on this one too So again, I got a little kind of abstract shape in there from just just from brush strokes, strokes totally accidental. I mean, not I didn't intend to get any particular shape. And then just really lightly. Kind of these are too dark. And it starts to feel, it feels like little pieces maybe chipped off, like big flat chunks. Anyway, when you get when you get around to this point, it's it's just putting in putting in more time and, and refining details over and over again. It, you could kind of just go on forever at this point. Um, so what I'm going to do is, you know, go ahead and and cut this, finish it off, then come back, talk a bit about it, and you know, call this 
call this video done, I think. Because uh, there, there's just no reason to watch me meticulously detail this thing for another two hours or whatever it'll take. So yeah, be back in a sec. Alright, um, sorry for cutting so much of this. I know that's going to bother some people, but, you know, I just, you know, I don't want this to drag on forever. Um, hopefully at this point, though, there's, there's not too much mystery in how, you know, the rest of these were done. It's, it is the same technique I showed repeated over and over again. You know, I didn't change brushes or anything like that. It's, if I zoom in and just analyze this one block, you can see, well, I got some orange color in there. It looks like a little purple, some blue, green, and some gray. And then I just pulled out highlights and, you know, maybe put in a little bit of shadow. Same story for every block. It's, you know, time and, and, and practice is all you really need if you're not used to painting to get to this point. Another thing I should talk about is, is when I do, like, cracks and, and dirt, I, uh, I try to ground that kind of stuff in, in reality a bit, if that makes sense. Uh, like this bottom piece, you can see, is pretty dirty and, and worn down and damaged compared to this top piece. Which, you know, it still has dirt and, and damage, but just not to the severity of this bottom part. And that's just, it's basically because, you know, this is lower to the ground. More dirt's going to accumulate down here, be it just blowing around or even rainwater washing on this, uh, down the column. is going to just accumulate dirt down there at the bottom. And being low to the ground, it, you know, even a little kid could climb on here and maybe rub their shoes and chip away these corners and things where they're less likely to be up here and uh, damage this as much. Um, I just try to keep that stuff in the back of my mind. It's not anything that anybody notices, but I feel that it, it gives my worlds a bit more authenticity than they otherwise would have. Um, even if they're highly stylized, it... Uh, it works out that way, which, you know, most of my stuff tends to be pretty stylized. But yeah, I think I think the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add that a bit of that gradient back that I had, that I've kind of lost. I'm just going to use this masking tool. If you've never used this, you know, you just turn it on, and then all it's doing is whatever you have selected in edit mode, whatever faces, I should say, is what it's going to limit you to paint on easy enough and I'm just going to use that with the fill tool. I was messing with I was messing with this earlier and it seems the gradient um, doesn't work with blend modes. Like normally I would do it like a black to white and just turn on multiply which will cancel out the white and then paint it on here and I'll just get like a darker transition down here to nothing. But blend modes don't seem to be working. So the work around is I'm just going to go black to black but then turn down this alpha on one end. It'll give me the same effect. It's just a different way to do it. Let's see, I need to turn strength all the way down. And I just want this to be pretty subtle. Yeah, that's fine. You can see that, you know, it's not anything that I would want anybody to notice necessarily, but it uh, just kind of indicates that there's a little more light up here than there is down here, and that just kind of gives it a bit more depth. That's all. But yeah, I think I think that's going to do it. Um, I'll try to upload this model somewhere in case anybody wants to download it and look at it up close or whatever. And beyond that, I think, uh, I, think I just have to say, uh, hope it helped, and thanks for watching.